Good evening. Good evening, everyone. This is the meeting of the Prince George's County Police Accountability Board for Prince George's County, Maryland. Today's date is October 23rd, 2024. Time is now 6 p.m. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order. I wanted to apologize if anybody was trying to get in. We had some technical difficulties of latency and equipment. We've gotten that fixed and resolved. So this is why we're starting a little late. The time is 6 54. I'm going to take the road. Vice Chair Santos. Present. James. Present. Ms. Bryant. Present. Ms. Bryant. Present. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. Present virtually. Ms. Jones. Present. Melton. Present. O'Neill. Present. And Mrs. Ridley. Present. Yes. All right. This is uh, our meeting for the community outreach coffee chapter of the chief. So we had, uh, I believe, in attendance virtually Chief Bryant from Glen Arden, uh, Chief Wright from New Charleston. Uh, they are virtual. So, okay. oh, and Chief Marcus Jones from Brentwood. So, uh, you can come off with you. Uh, this is time to just introduce yourself to the board. Anyone? Okay. Um, I'll, and also, do we have any um, any other guests that signed in by chance that wanted to speak? You know, okay. No. <laughs> okay. So is Chief Brian on? I was trying on? to get here to check the Ooh, what's the name of that? Mark Jones. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that being said, so can we just kind of monitor um, the chat? Well, uh, and, and so if you see anything, just let us know. We have a special guest here. We'd like to let him go ahead and introduce himself. He was not invited, but he. So graciously, uh, <laughs> so we really uh, appreciate him being so proactive and so uh, willing to, to show up. So, go ahead at this time, you can probably turn your mic on. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Chief Collington, uh, uh, Chief of Police, Lake Fair Police Department, also serve as the President for the Police Chiefs Association for Prince George's County, uh, Rowan. Uh, it's an honor to be here again uh, because I think this, this uh, needs to be a continuous dialogue between uh, the Police Accountability Board and law enforcement yeah. because we can't do what we do alone. We all have to work hand in hand in this to keep our community safe. So I originally came here to support the Chiefs tonight. Uh, so I say they are virtual, but Nonetheless, they are they're here to represent as well. So I'm um, pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Will you dock those ones that did not show up in person? Yeah, they'll get some text messages. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So we do have some questions. I do believe that those that are intended from uh, the chief, and I believe you guys have received the uh, questions. Can any one of the chiefs come off of mute, please, just so we know that uh, you can hear us and we can hear you as well? And Dr. Coleman, you can just throw put a thumb up if you can hear us to make sure that the audio is clear. And chat. You can hear us fine, Dr. Coleman. Okay, thank you. Well, maybe it's just my voice. Hey, Chiefs, if you got I don't know what it is. <laughs> But okay, so un un until we get that fixed, you guys may be having some uh, issues uh, with the equipment as well. So Chief Collington is here. Um, I don't know that these questions we have uh, already discussed with you, sir. Uh, and so uh, thank you again for coming. So at this time, I know that you and I talked a little bit before um, about things and reaching out to the community. We know that you're really big on just being a partnership, working with the community to 
the Chiefs and the Police Accountability Board. So is there anything that you would like to share uh, since your last time here that you heard or what you, from your officers or any other information that you had? Thank you. Uh, the only thing I'd like to share is that um, the feedback that we are getting uh, at the state level is, is positive feedback that we are getting. This partnership is working. It is showing transparency. It is showing accountability, and that it, it accountability is is uh, administered fairly and equitably. So we just want to keep that um, partnership going. That we are. Uh, in partnership with the community. So that's the thing that we want to convey the most. And then later on, I can talk about a new policy that was just uh, implemented from the commission. You, know, you want me to talk about that? Uh, that just- May I ask sorry. a follow-up question? Yes, ma'am. When you say the state, are you saying- the So state I also state serve state as a commission <laughs> for the state of Maryland where we implement policy and procedure that's uh, implemented throughout the state of Maryland to every law enforcement agency. And we, uh, October the second, we just implemented another policy uh, on behalf that, um, on behalf of the law enforcement. But again, showing that transparency, showing that accountability. But we want to highlight it now publicly. And there's some some uh, uh, parameters that must be met um, by each law enforcement agency to post that information. So I, whenever we okay, but well, what I was asking, I guess specifically was, is that related to the state? Accountability board, are you talking about the local? So I'm talking about the local ones. Okay. So because on the commissioners, they are PAB members there as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so okay. they we get feedback from them on the commission they serve there. So the, those that don't know um, how the uh, what's comprised of the uh, Maryland Police Training Commission, it's comprised of 30 members from across the state, sheriffs, chiefs. Uh, attorneys, judges, community members, uh, and then people from the training commission themselves. So there's there are 30 members that sit in a room just like this. We hear cases uh, they want to uh, revoke an officer certification. If they want to get an officer cert certified, uh, then we hear other complaints from the community, how we address them. In addition to that, we deal when these House Bill 670 uh, laws pass, then it is pushed up to the commission and now the legislators are saying, we need you guys to make a policy and standard and push it out to every municipality, every county, every state, church, uh, department in the state. So that's what we attach with law uh, throughout the state. So it's a lot of work, but you know, I said, if we want to effect change, we gotta be in the game, right? So we gotta have a seat at the table. So I'm happy to serve. Thank you, sir. Uh, are we, we, can we confirm that Chief Bryant and Chief Bryce are on? Chief Bryant is on, and Chief Bryant should be logging back in. Okay, so Chief Bryant is on. All right, so. Oh, Mr. Chair, could we get the Chief, because I'm not going to hold, I don't know who Bryce, I don't know what, who they represent. Chief Bryant is from Glenarden. We're not Chief Bryce. Bryce. Brian, I don't see a Brian up. Keep talking back again. So Chief Brian is the chief for New Carroll. You said Chief Rice, I'm here, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. How you doing? I am well, sir. How was everyone tonight? Great, great. Thank you. you know, we had some uh, technical difficulties and we're slow getting on, so we apologize David for the delay. Excuse me, sir. But thank you for hanging in there. Um, so uh, did you get a copy of the questions, Chief? Chief Brian? I do apologize. The speaker on this computer is not the greatest in the world. Okay, and no worries. Um, you can you can hear us okay? I can. Yeah, I'm just holding it up to my ear so I can make sure I don't miss anything. Oh, we apologize. We got you some better equipment, so, so we'll take care of that. But um, so what we'll do, we'll go around and we'll start with uh, Mr. Melton. Uh, we can look at the questions, and then everybody can just take the next question moving around. So we'll just make it a, a rolling uh, question. Uh, and then Chief Rice, um, we're waiting for Chief Bryant to get on uh, as well. So we'll ask one of the questions. Uh, we do have Chief Collington here as well. So, uh, uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, 
Chief Jones, how you doing, sir? My apologies. How are you? Okay. Well, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and um. Well, since we only have uh, the one chief on at this particular time, I think that we can just go around and just ask them where Chief Bryant is going at. Oh, okay. Okay. These were from where? Okay. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? All right. Thank you, Chief Bryant. How are you? I'm, I'm well. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was virtual. I'm sorry. I'm not there in person, but I'm happy to be a part of this um, very important meeting. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for, for uh, coming. And also, we want to apologize for some technical difficulties. So that's why we're going to be late. But uh, we're going to get started. Uh, we did send up. Oh, uh, we, we shouldn't have to swap. We're going to get this big. So thank you uh, for showing up, Chief Brian. Uh, we had technical difficulties earlier, so we do apologize about the delay, but thank you for hanging in yes. and signing back in as well. So we're going to go around and ask the questions. Um, and I know that because it is uh, virtual, it may be a little difficult to kind of answer. So either one of the chiefs can take an opportunity to ask the question that we ask, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. All right, sure. Now, where's Chief Brian from? Glenn Sorry about that, right, sir. Can you stop us? Um, how have complaint investigations by your agency been impacted by this process? Is that question for me, Chief Bryant? Yeah. Anyone can answer that. Okay. Well, um, as far as Glen Arden is concerned, um, it's been a very helpful tool for the city of Glen Arden. Um, it, it, the process has been very smooth. We we have great um, relationships with the PAB and ACC. Um, as far as communicating and getting the work process and so forth, so it's been outstanding for my agency. So we love it. We love it. Speaking for New Carrollton, uh, Chief Rice, um, my um interactions uh with all everyone has been uh, amazing. Um, especially with Tangie, she has been a critical part of helping us. Our community loves it because again, they have a, an outside voice. Uh, they can go to IE you guys and uh, express any concerns they may have, which is uh, actually kind of refreshing. It's it definitely um, it's a lot more refreshing than I actually thought it would be. I was definitely a little discouraged, but and that's just being honest. Uh, but it has been an amazing tool for us. Great, and that's what we want. We want honest conversation. So whatever you feel, just uh, let us know. Thank you, sir. Oh. Hi, uh, thank you both for being here again. Uh, well, thank you for uh, being here again. My name is Daniel Jones, I'm a member of the PAB uh, from High School, Maryland. Uh, the next question we have on here, um, the community is concerned about uh, recent increases in certain juvenile crimes, such as person-to-person -person offenses, misdemeanor and felony assaults, property offenses, uh, and misdemeanor and felony thefts, and other serious crimes, including carjackings. Uh, what strategies uh, are you and your department using to combat juvenile crimes um, that go beyond arrests and citations? Well, with 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 New Carrollton, um, you know, we we have such a great relationship with our schools. You know, we have uh, five schools in our city um, and with uh, teachers and stuff. Um, and we communicate very, very well, you know, with them and the students. You've got just as many students who like the police who don't like the police, so to speak. And um, we make sure we attend all functions that are going on within our schools because that's all of our community children. And, um, you know, we we, we definitely have, uh, we use their, in. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I do apologize. Um, we, we take whatever they say and, you know, we, we uh, field it out and we uh, check everything out. And uh, we haven't had... Lately, we haven't had a lot of juvenile crimes in the city. So uh, the strategies of the guys stepping up patrol, putting police cars uh, in different areas of the city that, you know, we're not using right now um, kind of are deterring people from coming into the city and uh, uh, raising trouble of any kind. Thank you. Uh, Chief Bryant, uh, Chief 
Yeah, so um, pretty much the same thing Chief Rice uh, stated earlier. Um, we just have three elementary schools in the city of Glen Arden, no middle schools and no high schools. So um, I have a, a school resource officer um, that frequents the three elementary schools. Um, really, we don't have any problems with the um, with the elementary kids. Um, as far as the juveniles, um, we had issues with certain juveniles who pretty much stated to us that we couldn't do anything to them because they were juveniles. So what we try to do is um, when we know who they are and so forth, we try to interact with them, interact with their parents and uh, try to develop a relationship with their parents. And we, you know, we had a couple of parents come forward, giving us heads up and helping us with these individuals. Um, I had four that was actually terrorizing the city of Glen Arden and um, two of the four got killed in that car accident um, last October. Um, when they ran into that post, I think it was on, um, might have been uh, lot, uh, lots, lots of road or something like that in October. Um, but ever since um, those two uh, were deceased, um, one other brother, who was the brother one, he got um, charged as an adult um, recently in Montgomery County for a carjacking that occurred out there. So pretty much my crime has been down. But what we try to do, we try to interact um, with the juveniles and stuff, especially um, when we have events. Um, we just did a um, uh, Glen Arden Day where several juveniles that we know that uh, frequent and cause problems, they were at the event. We try to you know interact with them and let them know who we are and let them know that we are watching them and we talk to their parents and stuff. So that's the, one of the two, them, some of the tools we're using in the city of Glen Arden. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chief, I don't know if you want to add that. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So in addition to those uh, comments made by those chiefs, uh, we also have a very robust community outreach uh, program, such as the Intergoal program, uh, Straight Talk with Teens and Mentorship programs, uh, Junior Police Academy uh, program. We engage in our National Night Out events. And just recently, we did a, a march at, you know, with myself, we did a march with, with the uh, students from our recreation department uh, in our anti-bullying march. So we try to engage them all the way around. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, we try to work with our state's attorney on our, our juvenile services to find alternatives to incarceration. So we will work with them to kind of like community service type stuff. So we would try to engage them um, and especially in Bladesburg, we just started a cadet program. So we are bringing in kids from 18 to 20, uh, 20 and a half, because the goal is at 20 and a half, if they decide they want to go to police academy, they'll be 21 when they graduate, because by law, you have to be 21 to grade them. So you, I'm a firm believer if you change the mindset, you change behavior. So the more we engage with our youth in a positive manner, we don't have to deal with them on the other side. Thank you very much. Uh, that's that's really interesting that you said that. I just talked uh, when I did my vital law with uh, uh, an officer who's 20, 22, and he just graduated from the police academy. Oh, and he was involved in the cadet program. So yeah. that's really a good a good uh, strategy, I think. But what about um, for the uh, for the other chiefs, Chief, Chief Brian and Chief Bryce? I don't know if uh, Mr. Jones, uh, Chief Jones is back on or not, but what kind of strategies do you use to monitor social media so that like one of the events that happened last earlier this year where over 800 teenagers showed up, um, do you have a, a process in place to monitor those kinds of communications and, and sort of uh, predict or uh, estimate what kinds of things are going on in the community? Uh, Chief Bryant. Um we have, I have a sergeant that, uh, one sergeant that he, he goes on and uh, he monitors certain things um, like that. Um, but we haven't had that much activity. You know, I, I'll check with him and that, make sure he goes on and stuff. Um, but we did have, um, with the four juveniles I mentioned earlier, um, they actually stopped putting videos out, viral videos out about my police officers approaching them um, before two of them were deceased. Um, every time the police officer come out, they go live and they'll post saying, look, this police officer harassing me, uh, his badge number and his name and so forth. So with them doing that, it actually helped us out because we didn't have community members 
uh, seeing who they were also. So um, that one the reverse thing they did to actually help us out. But um, I do have a sergeant that, you know, he goes on and he uh, he monitors virtually. But it's, it's not a big thing we do um, on a regular basis. Um, but that's one of the things that we do in City Glen Arden. Thank you. Chief Rice again. Um, in our in our city, um, we have I have a meeting uh, every month, uh, second Saturday of every month, um, where it's the uh, just meet with the chief. And when I talk to the parents, the parents will feed me information off of their their kids' social media, uh, giving because they don't they no more want their child to have a negative interaction with the police then we want to you know so you know hey chief did you hear about this you know that might be going on at charles carroll middle school or at parkdale high school you know when they hit me with parkdale or uh duval or something like that you know i feed that off of the county uh because that's within their jurisdiction anything that's in our jurisdiction uh we just make sure we're there because if it's going to kick off we make sure that we're there before it happens and it just doesn't happen so I give a lot of credit uh, to the uh, parents and grandparents who come to my meetings and feed me that information. Again, they're not trying to get their their uh, grandson or, or, or son in trouble. Uh, they're trying to uh, nip it before it happens. And they have my personal number. So thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's really the appropriate way to keep it from happening. So thank you so much for your answer. Thanks. And Chief Ross, you kind of going in and out of this temperature, so it'd be uh, as you can see repeat yourself. But thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Marcia Ridley. And my question is according to the 2023 data, unbecoming conduct, use of force, and disorderly discourtesy. Thank you, Ms. Ridley. I'm sorry. Oh. I think you're on number four. Uh, uh, I think your your question is number. Four. Oh, mine is number. Four. I know you're ready to get to number five. Oh, no. yeah. Was my mic working? Yes. Uh -huh. oh. mm -hmm. Sorry. How does your department engage and communicate with the community, citizens, organizations, businesses, and other local stakeholders? specifically to create positive relationships between your agency and those groups? Well, um, Chief, again, um, and again, in the city of New Carrollton, you know, we, between like, uh, uh, between the National Friday out, we have our community day, uh, trunk treatment Saturday. It's all different events where these young people. Chief Rice, but we could not understand anything you just said. Um, so we're going to send you a message in the chat real quick. Uh, Chief Brian, uh, would you like to thank you? Yeah. Um, well, pretty much uh, with the city of Glen Arden, what we try to do is um, we try to be very active with the community. So um, we attend a lot of the community events that they have going on. Um, of course, we invite them to our events um, that we have in the city, but we try to actually reach out to them, like the, the coffee meets, on um, the senior events, um, the events at the post. Um, so we try to we try to attend and be active in their events um, also and go and answer questions and so forth and be active. Um, is um, is Chief Aziz on from the county? No, sir. OK, well, we work we work hand in hand with the county also because um, my uh, my city falls within Division three 
Um, so we work hand in hand with a uh, with a major and commander and captains and stuff. So we attend a lot of their events. They do a lot of community events also. So a lot of the citizens they're familiar with the county and with uh, Glen Arden attend a lot of events. So that that's that's one of the ways we have a great relationship with the community and we share a lot of information. So that's what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So in addition to that, uh, how we build that continue to strengthen the relationship with the community, uh, we work uh, hand in hand with the DAO community because I'm a firm believer. I always say if you don't have the buy in from the community, from your elected officials and from the people that you lead as chiefs and leaders, then you have a failed system. So with the, in order to strengthen that, we have what we call the uh, used to be known as the Citizen Police Academy, and now it's changed to the Community uh, Police Academy, where we invite members from the, the community to come and join an uh, eight to 10 week program, just to see what it's like to get some insight into being a police officer. Too. But we put them on some of the same stress, put them in some of the, the same, but it's all controlled training environment. Uh, our National Night Out is another huge event uh, where we promote uh, you know, the cohesive, uh, relationship with the community summer jam what we do every year we uh, invite all of our students before they go back to school we we exhort them we give the backpack giveaways and supplies school supplies and then we have a uh, nice community event for them we have you know just different activities basketball uh, moon bounces whatever uh, we have for them have you know a couple burgers and hot dogs things like that then we also work with our uh, fake leads in the community so we have our Faith in Blue every year. We do events um, between the police and our faith-based uh, organizations. Um, in Blainsboro, we have we meet monthly with all the principals. We have seven schools in, in the town of Blainsboro. Uh, 6,500 students attend. Uh, we meet with all the principals to bring them up on you know, current events, uh, activities that we have. We learn from them uh, what their concerns are. We try to address them. Truancy, whatever it is, we try to work with them to make sure that these kids succeed in the neighborhood. Uh, then we have our, we work with our community HOA organizations. Um, so we understand their concerns as well in the community. We try to come up strategically with plans to improve the quality of life, um, keep everyone safe. So that's the goal of, of law enforcement is to improve the quality of life, build those relationships, make communities vibrant and uh, safe people want to live. Lastly, we have a monthly coffee with a cop. So again, so we try to stay very engaged with the community, let them know that, hey, you know, we are part of the community. You know, we take pride in what we do. And, and I'm not just speaking for Blaze, but I think all of these chiefs, we all share the same goal in our community, and the goal is to keep safe, keep the community safe, but also strengthen the relationships between, you know, we live in these challenges times now, um, where everything is scrutinized, Everything is, you know, people are ridiculed really for doing the job. So we want to make sure we keep that transparency, that partnership going. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, I have the next question here. According to 2023 data, unbecoming conduct, use of force, and discourtesy by an officer represent 53 of all 53 percent of all allegations against officers. What strategies has your department implemented to mitigate and reduce these types of allegations? Is there a training or a component of ongoing training that deals with officer intervention and de-escalation? Uh, Chief Bryant, uh, yes. Um, so, um, and, and you, that's very um, good statistic right there, because um, all the chiefs can tell you that um, when we get these complaints in, it's most definitely for these uh, uh, conduct on becoming use of force, uh, discourtesy, um, allegations against the officers. So um, what we what we do is um, we try to educate these officers. Um, one of the things that I do personally is um, attend the roll calls, and you know update these officers about um, being uh, courteous and telling them that they, because they took the oath, they had to serve the community and they held to a higher standard 
um, so that they must conduct themselves um, that way on and off duty. Um, one of the great things too is that um, they have annual in-service training that they, they have to attend every year and they cover uh, these topics in in-service training. Um, another thing I did was I, I reached out to uh, Chief Collington from Bladensburg about a year ago uh, for some um, input on what he does. And he uh, he told me about the uh, Lexapol Police One Academy training, which I uh, recently got where we do uh, training. You can do online training modules um, with your department. Um, and it, it covers things such as ethics, uh, use of force, um, a lot of these topics that we discussed in um, how do you conduct yourself, how do you deal with the public, um, community, how do you deal with community. So um, that's ongoing training. And for actually for some of the classes, they get credit for. So uh, those tools have been in instrumental in helping uh, us in the city. And last but not least, um, anytime we get negative press, a news um, article about an officer um, doing something, I let my officers know, I go back and play the news article for them in roll call and let them look at it and let them know how it gives not only that uh, agency that was accused, but every law enforcement also a black eye and how it affects all of us and stuff. So it's constant reminders and um, following up with these guys and letting them know that uh, we're held to a higher standard. Thank you. In New Carrollton, I hope y'all can hear me better than the last time. Um, yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um, in New Carrollton, you know, uh, one of the, the the biggest components uh, that we have uh, undertaken uh, in two thousand and nine, well, we established our body worn camera program, and that has been a, a godsend because when people make complaints, especially on the small things like discourtesy, uh, uh, professionalism. Things like that. It's it's you know if they have a date and time, it is so easy for for me and my staff uh, to pull that um, body camera footage up uh, to get an idea or a sense of what was going on uh, during their event. And when we see that the officer, though may have been a little bit abrasive uh, based on the conduct of the uh, individual they were dealing with, you know we will bring them in you know, and have them watch the body worn camera uh, themselves. And, you know, and nine out of 10 times, you know, they pull back and go, man, you know, uh, you know, I didn't realize I, I did that or wow, I, I, I really did that. Or, you know, and then it's, uh, and it's apologies from, from both ends. And, um, but every, every, every time we deal with an issue like that, it's always a lesson learned. It's uh, uh, there's always enough fault to go around uh, to everyone, and we train on that constantly. Um, uh, like like the other chief said, you know, we we we're on a constant bend of uh, looking for the best training. We we deal with legit. Legit has a ton of online training uh, that we send our officers through, um, and they can do it uh, on their spare time or. If they're in there doing a report or something and they're or waiting for property, you know, they can log in and, and and do one of the classes. And again, that's it's like he said, it's on ethics, it's on you know behavior, uh, de-escalation. And then once a month, um, every month, uh, on Wednesdays, the city of New Carrollton literally shuts down uh its whole operation, not the police, to, not just the PD, not patrol, but uh internal, and it becomes a mandatory training session on all aspects of uh, city government. Uh, most of the times it's, it, it is based on ethics. It's based on customer service, though customer service from administration uh, is a little different than uh, how we deal with people on the street. Uh, the bare bones about it is not, it's all the same. You know, um, you got to treat people how you expect uh, them to treat you, uh, no matter how, how much they escalate things uh, verbal wise, they can't hurt you with words. So trying to teach uh, grown people that uh, the words will not hurt you um, is definitely a task, uh, but it, it, it's finally coming through for anyone that uh, gets caught up in, like you said, and any kind of verbal uh, disruption uh, in their professionalism. And again, um, if it can't be settled, complaint goes to you guys. And then uh, we, we take it, we, we, we just take whatever you guys say that uh, needs to be done. So thank you all for that, taking it off my plate. <laughs>
We'll have to we'll continue oh. all around. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so right after the uh, incidents that happened in other states, uh, especially like George Floyd uh, incident, uh, I immediately implemented uh, the policy, the duty to intervene um, policy, that uh, so that we only we police each other out there. Right, so there's no uh, when well, he's a sergeant and he's a uh, he's a uh, slick sleeve, uh, no rank crap, right? Doesn't matter, you know what I mean? You see somebody that seem like they lose him, step in, right? Step in and say, hey, let, let me take it, you walk it off, or whatever you need to do, right? So that keeps them out of trouble. Um, de escalation, uh, so as uh, Chief Brian mentioned, so we have the online training, so we only require to have 16 hours of in-service training to maintain our certification in the state of well. that We only require to have 16 in-service hours. We have well over 100 hours uh, of in-service because I implement training uh, through the training officers uh, every month. They have to complete some online training. Um, and that's some of that training is on, definitely on de-escalation, but also implicit and explicit bias training, right? Because sometimes, People consciously don't know that they're stepping out of line, right? And now that you know, we have these trainings, so I always say your best officers, your best trained officers. So how do we hold them accountable when we don't train? So that's one thing we need to continue to do is have those online training. Every officer in, in my department goes through the crisis intervention training, right? So you have to understand your trauma. You have to understand mental illness, right? We're not clinicians. But you, you should have some indication, uh, some awareness that something's not right, right? So if this person isn't speaking with you, maybe not, to, not, just he, not just because he doesn't want to speak, but there could be something else going on. So just take a step back and then slow it down and, say, and try to evaluate the situation and then come up with a plan of action, right? So that's something that, that we do there. Uh, I have uh, one of my staff do uh, monthly integrity checks on the body worn cameras. You know, so we'll just start looking at body worn cameras just to make sure everybody's out there doing what they should be doing, right? So last year, um, because the body worn camera, you have somebody in the car, it's point four, right? So that's not enough because sometimes if they forget to turn it on, you, you lose that data, right? So in addition to that, we put cameras in all of my cruises now have cameras inside the car. So you don't turn on your body worn camera, you, you still have access to, we have video of them inside the cruise. So we just want to make sure that we keep that transparency and accountability going because you know sometimes people, uh, not always, are going to be truthful when they make a complaint against an officer, right? So that's when we have to step back and just look at this uh, objectively to make sure if the officer is wrong, let's hold them accountable. I've brought people into the station and said, uh, can you tell us what the officer said again? And uh, they say what they said. And I said, well, I want to show you the video. Maybe we missed, we, we missed something along the way. Let's watch the video together and you tell me when did that happen. And then they'll say, well, uh, okay, I kind of see your point now. Right? So because sometimes people, you, you stop them, they upset, right? Nobody wants to get a ticket. Nobody wants to be stopped by the police. So, but let's be fair to the officer. Because you're talking about his livelihood now, potentially, right? So let's be fair to the officer. If the officer's wrong, I have no, I, you know, I hope you guys heard me say last time, I don't subscribe to that metaphor of the thin blue line, because I, I don't think, I don't see us, us in them. Like that, that implies there's somebody on the other side of the line. No, we all in this together, right? So just keeping that relationship going, uh, every complaint coming to my department is investigated, right? It's investigated. Uh, I send it over to the internal affairs uh, lieutenant. He looks into it. Um, once we're done, we send it up to the ACC. Um, and I'll say that uh, that lieutenant is uh, 35 years plus. Uh, I brought him from another county uh, where he worked in internal affairs. So he doesn't know anybody, really. He didn't come up through blame for problem, right? So he's going to hold it. He, if they're right, he's going to say they're right. It goes up to the ACC. ACC comes back down. 
but they would you guys hear about it, you know, you know, get into the the legal potatoes of it, but you know the logistics of it, right? So I think that's uh, you know, again, this is a all around the room type accountability and oversight on police action. So keeping us all together. And as I stated, you know, sometimes uh, it's understanding what's going on when we talk about mental illness. So I'm just so glad that um, we have these type dialogues and discussions. I don't like to call them dialogues all the time. I like to say discussion because dialogue means this is a one and done, right? But this is a conversation discussion that we have. So uh, I'm just excited to be here. So I look, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking because I don't want y'all to say, we're not gonna have the chief back here. Don't oh, you he talk too much. No, we're not gonna say that. Yeah. You can get an invitation every time. Can I ask a follow-up? Um, let's go around at first and then we'll come back to the next place. That's right. Uh, uh, you, you said that there are only 16 hours of training required? Yep. So you only have to have 16 hours of, of in-service training. And that includes firearms. There, there's some mandatory training that comes from training commission, which may be uh, like uh, implicit, explicit bias. It might be uh, sexual harassment. So the state will say this year, these are your mandatory four in-service uh, classes you must complete, right? So yeah, so it's 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 sixteen hours a year per year. Now most agencies, most departments do more. As you heard the chief say that you know they they have to go into the uh, Lexus Nexus, the uh, police one. So legit has police one as well. So those you know, they log in and then they put them down, and most of the time they get in service credits for. Them. So like I said, you know sixteen hours is just not enough, in my opinion. So we, we we go above that, but we can never go below that. I'm pretty sure every I'm pretty sure every at least every municipal. I only speak for the municipals because I I interact with them all the time. But with the municipal chiefs, um, I think all of us um well exceed uh basic mandatory training on just about everything, and and that includes firearms. Like uh, qualifications on firearms, I think is uh, seventy. You know, we we make it mandatory that you got to shoot at eighty or be or better. Because believe it or not, we have to account for every round that comes out of that weapon, whether it strikes a target or not. We still have to be accountable for that. So uh, we've all lifted up our um, accountability as far as training goes. And um, it actually does really show on the streets. I know the first couple of years has been hard on all of y'all because you're getting a, uh, a load of uh, complaints. But like you said, most of the complaints are uh, discourtesy uh, and the use of force. Um I don't know. I, I don't know your statistics on how many people you have found guilty on the use of force as far as officers go. Uh, but um, probably most of the use of force is explanatory if they have body cameras on because uh, you get to see it in action and you can draw a conclusion based on everything that you're seeing. So um, uh, training is our key for everything. Um, like was we'll set for us all earlier uh, in the, uh, the, at the, uh, last legislative uh sessions you know uh y'all set the standards and it's up to us to, us chiefs to go out there and implement and um i think we've uh we've done a lot with explanations that sometimes make absolutely no sense um not from y'all not from y'all i'm talking about from legislation <laughs> but uh we uh, how do you say it we meet as a group and uh, uh we we have to figure it out and uh, we try to make sure whatever it is, whatever they're trying to say, we uh, we do it right. So, how does your department ensure data is publicly accessible? Do you conduct sorry? Do you conduct data? Presentations for the community. So I repeat it. I talk fast. Um, how does your department ensure data is publicly accessible? Part one. Part two. Do you conduct data presentations for the community? Do we conduct what? What is it? Data? You said data? data. Yes. Data presentations. Yes. Yeah. We we keep we keep all data. One th one thing about it, we have a, our new council is all about the uh, numbers that's just their thing so we have to keep data on everything so and right now we were very lucky uh, i made sure that i sent my major to all the the, the different classes um, for this particular kind of uh 
uh, event. And so he is the master when it comes to uh, uh, pulling data. So, um, yep, if you need data, let me know. I'm sure I got it with the, with the press of a button. Second part, Chief, was how do you make it accessible to the public? Um, normally on request, unless it's mandated that it has to be posted somewhere. Um, you know, uh, like any uh, paramilitary organization, um, we'll give you what you what y'all say we have to. But if and I'm just being honest, if you tell me you if you don't tell me you need it, I'm definitely not going to put it out there. I mean, <laughs> that's just being honest. But when uh, when uh, when it comes to complaints and stuff like that, we know the rules on all that, and we uh, we post all that on our um, our Facebook, and we'll post we post it on our website. Okay, he's probably probably giving that support. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we make sure that the, uh, information is we uh we do public meetings with the council. Um, as she we do prime meetings. I do prime updates before the council. Uh, we post data crime reports uh, on our website, so we make sure that that's up there, accessible to the public, so that they can see. Like we have nothing to hide. Uh, we're going to put it up there so you can see it. Okay. Um, and then we have our regular CompStat meeting. That's a, a data-driven approach to solving crime. So we will work with the community um, and we will go to these different spots. If they say they have a problem with uh, car break-ins, then we'll pull all that data and then we'll I'll pull the team together. We'll go to the HOA meetings and I'll have my code enforcement. I'll have the, the detectives. i have command staff and i have a dispatch center. I have somebody from each one of the divisions in the department able to, with me to answer any questions that the public may have. So that's how we get the information out there to them. You're talking about the Bladenburg Council. Yes. You said Bladenburg yes. City Council. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then once a year, I will put out an annual report that's posted online on, on the prime data that we collect throughout the year. Chief Brown, I see you back, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, so pretty much um, what Chief Rice stated and um, Chief Collington stated, we pretty much do the same thing. Um, we we, we uh, present our data at uh, community meetings and so forth. Um, we, we post it on our website also, but um, certain information, we don't post everything. Certain information you have to ask for for different types of stacks and stuff. Um, we just don't lay everything out there. But um, it is driven by numbers and stuff, and we got to report data to um, the FBI for the UCR report, Uniform Crime Report. Um, actually, um, last week we just found out um, that the city of Glen Arden is um, the second safest city in the state of Maryland. Um, we've been a, we was in third for the last six years, um, so we moved up to second place um, due to data information and stats. Um, so we're happy about that. But yeah, um, that is very important. And um, we make sure we share it and um, keep everybody posted what we have going on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Earl O'Neill, and the question I have um, does your department? Review uh, body worn camera recordings. If not, why? Chief Bryant, um, yes, um, we we have body worn cameras, and as uh, the chief stated earlier, I think it was Chief Collington and uh, Chief Rice, um, th they are they are blessings in disguise for the officers. Um, because if you go back and you start talking about conduct, unbecoming, use of force, uh, discourtesy and stuff, anytime we get a complaint, we go back and we look at the footage um, from the body-worn cameras, um, from the information we got. And believe it or not, um, over 80% of the time, what, what was told us and what we see in the camera is totally different. And so it um, helped us out, um, especially um, when we're dealing with PAB and the ACC, um, we got we have a great relationship with them. Um, when they do an investigation, they contact us and ask us to send the, the body worn camera um, footage to help them make um, assessments and determinations on um, on how the case should be done. So it's um, it's a great tool, and we do it. 
Um, we also, um, we randomly go through uh, body worn camera footage and just go through there. We have the Lieutenant, he goes through there and, you know, pick an officer, pick like three officers a week, look at some footage um, just to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, we bring that officer in. Um, if it's not egregious or whatever, um, it could be something like um, something they did in a traffic stop, not stating their name or not being courteous. Um, and we bring them in, let them look at the video and talk to them, and ask them um, why they did what they did and what they can do better. So um, it's been very effective for us. And because they know we uh, we check it randomly, um, I think it keep them on the keep them on their toes um, about being professional and so forth. So it's been very helpful for us. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Price, Chief Price must stop. Chief Price may need to raise his back. <laughs> and the phone, so. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll come back. So that's question number six. Okay. Are those Oh, so, yeah, thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, then, Chief uh, Collington, we'll start with you on what additional resources do you need to do your jobs effectively? Well, I, I think that uh, some of the stuff that we would need to do uh, to do the job better is technology, right? So we know we're moving into the AI. Uh, Part of life now, where everything is computerized and captured and learned by computer. So I think just providing um, good resources for the police officers out there to do their jobs, uh, whether it's uh, mobile data terminals, um, working closely with with the uh, PAD as we we're doing. So I would like to see it go a step further. Really, um, I would like to see the PAD like actually visit police departments, right? Just come do some ride along, sit down, talk to some of those. I'm, I'm sure officers would like to speak with you because they will, they have a story too, like they would like to say. So just doing a ride along, it gives you a broader perspective of what we're doing out there. You know, I know you go through the police, um, you, so ride police cap, ride you do ride along. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, you, you know what? I'm going to have to go back and check the record. <laughs> Not with you. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm about to say <laughs> once a night. Oh, okay. <laughs> we must be going to get some dinner. Right? <laughs> but you know, one of the things that I noted was he didn't have a GPS on his in his in his car. Uh -huh. He had his phone. Yeah. Is that true across the board? Yeah, they, yeah, they don't. They don't. Chris George's County. Yeah. So they, they don't, don't have just, a GPS on there. And I'm surprised he had a GPS because everybody, you know, GPS used home. to be a thing. But now and everything, you know, Google, I mean, uh, Waze and all of that, people use it right on their phone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they don't put GPS. In, in. So that means he's riding along, trying to find the directions. Well. He must have been new. He didn't know. No, no, he, no, he said he was 22. Though. He yeah. was had an old car. He didn't. Uh, couldn't, he couldn't come up on the. Well, we we have brand new cars. That don't have GPS. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you can plug it in usually. And yeah, your phone. You can put it in the crate. Whatever. Yeah. And, and, and use it that way, but. Yeah, so I'm not sure what was going on with that department or oh, God. Yeah, so, so so having better better equipment, you know, okay. really really helps with everything now. Usually has like the uh, Apple Play, right? That's you know what I mean. So you can you can plug it in and see it on like a five inch or whatever size screen display screen you have in your group. But that would be good. But I, I would just say just having more so than the resources is just having them support out there. You know what I mean? Because um, as I shared with uh, Chair DeVos, the new form that came out, you know, so whenever you get around that, I can elaborate on that. But that's something out there that we want to push out there to the, the community that not, no, you, most of the time they want to call it about the police, it's negative. But there's also some compliments that can come in. And now that they... Yes, well... <laughs> yes and no. So can we okay. hold that? And I think, uh, yeah, I'll come back to that. That, that sounds like a good thing. We just want to give the other chiefs an opportunity to continue to ask the question that uh, was just asked of them. You, we want the information, sir. Don't worry. We're coming back. I know y'all not going to invite me no more. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that, but you just, it's the opposite. 
Dr. Coleman, I, I apologize. I just looked up and I saw your face, and I'm so sorry for not giving the opportunity. But if you think of a question, when we get done, uh, the last question, you do. Let's go ahead and ask. Okay. Did you I was, I, like I said, I just saw your face. I thought I was going to have to ask the last question. <laughs> and I apologize. But thank you. So we'll, we'll, you'll get questions up now. Right now, still on Mr. Bank. Uh, it would be the Chief, uh, to Chief Bryant, the question on what, um, it would be what, the question, Chief Bryant, would be what additional resources do you need to do your jobs effectively? Um, like I said, um, we had, as far as resources from uh, PAB and HCC, um, no additional resources. Um, as I stated earlier, man, we have a great relationship with PAB and HCC. Um, Miss Allen, it, because Miss Allen, I'm on this call tonight. Um, I keep in touch with her on a regular basis. Uh, I have a great relationship with Inspector um, Bennett, um, uh, Mr. Stanton. So I have a great relationship with um, Miss Whitmire and some of the others. So we have a great relationship. So I say the resources is just for us to keep that, um, keep the relationship strong so we can move forward. But um, as far as resources, um, as Chief Collington stated, I guess as um, technology move forward and stuff, you guys are passing on us and we're passing on a share. But um, everything's lovely on um, as far as our relationship and where we're moving forward. So I'm very happy. Uh, Chief Frank, did he, uh, did he drop? Can you can you hear me? Oh no, I'm just looking. Chief oh, Brian, Chief, Chief yes. Brian, hold on for a second. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. A second, well, can you can you hold your question for a minute, sir? Is Chief Rice on? Yes. Okay, just wanted to see. Okay, go ahead. Oh, he is. I, yeah. I, I can't see you. You can't see me. No, Brian, Oh, Chief Rice. R I C E. Oh, Rice. Okay. No, yes, sir. Oh, he ain't on. Yeah. Okay, he must have dropped. Okay. Chief Brian. Yes, sir. So you say you don't need no more resource, you don't need no more money or nothing? From, from, from PAB? No, not no, PAB. that ain't what we asked. Like your, just, just your department. Oh, well, trust me, guys. Trust me. You need to do your job effectively. Well, uh, let me keep it real with you. I'm, I'm fighting to get a police facility. I don't even have a police facility, okay? My guys don't even have a locker room. So I was on a, I was, I was on a community meeting the other night with the city council, so I don't even have a police facility. Okay, I um I just have an office and a place where they do fingerprints and a closet for storage. I, my office don't have a locker room, don't have a place to do work. Um, so I need a lot of resources. So that's something that uh, the city of Glen Arden. I've been effectively working with them for the past two and a half years. They're trying to make happen. So um, we we they're starting to make strides forward. Um, Senator Benson's been great helping. We're getting bond bills and getting money for this police facility that we're trying to erect with hopefully in the next two and a half years. So. Um, I most definitely need resources, but I thought the question was resources from PAB. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dr. Coleman. On you, man. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, my name is Andre. I'll let you guys know. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. I am under the weather and I did not want to pass it on um to anyone. Um, so my name is Andrea Coleman and I live in Bowie and um, I'm a board member and I just wanted to know if you all the chiefs had any questions of us, um, you know, any any questions or additional information that you would need from uh, from us as the PAB. I'm sorry, you gotta help the poor people have all this stuff. Chief Brian, sir. Uh, uh, no, ma'am. Um, uh, I can't think of any right any questions that I might have for you guys. Um, at the particular time. So, thank you. Thank you. So, so how do you guys feel our relationship? As you heard from us, how do you guys feel the relationship since we have stood up this program? How is the relationship? Been? Well, I'll say um, initially, uh, we're mandated to, to reach out to the chiefs to have these meetings. You guys are not mandated to participate. So I think that it's a great uh, thing that you guys have not shied away from participating in these meetings so that it is transparent and open to the public as well. Um, and so we thank you for that. Um, this is a, a, just a start. And I spoke with the, when we spoke with the other chiefs, um, we wanted to make this, and I believe you did, we wanted to make this a uh, joint effort with the community, with the accountability board and law enforcement agency. And like you said, we can't 
do this alone. One entity can't do it by itself. So I think that it's great that we're uh, forming this relationship. And like uh, Chief Brian said, he has a great relationship with the DAB and the AC. Great. Oh, I, I apologize. Great. 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 So many attorneys in the room. I just misspoke. Uh, so I think that it's it's a great thing. Um, uh, to get things started with a learning curve. Uh, and one of the things that I was concerned about was to make sure that the officers felt uh, that they, they had confidence in us to make sure that we would be fair and equitable. And also that we were, you know, we're just really trying to improve the quality of life and we're very fast each other, each one of us. So. I'd like to say that as I go about my day or in meetings or organizations or just walking through the program, I introduce myself to the police officers and I tell them, I'm, I'm like, they're like, oh, wow, it's not good. Exactly. Yeah, all the time. Um, and uh, doing ride alongs, I think that goes a long way to get an understanding about what they're thinking and how, how it really works and what the challenges are. So I think that our relationship is getting stronger. And being out as a ride along also helps you see the community and what they're having problems with. So we think that you're doing a great job. From what you say, I don't know. It's like, is that true? All yeah, those things are true. That's amazing. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I've, I've shared this with you guys. Last time I was here at the commission, there's some members from the PAB uh, from around the state. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, Prince George County getting it right. I, I will say that, and I'm not saying that because the fourth county. Um, like feel good. Yeah, I'm telling you, we, we get it right here. Um, they are so... Uh, they they they're catching up. I'll say that they're catching up. But when they talk about working with law enforcement, and you know, I mean, especially in Baltimore City, uh, it, it's turf. You know, they 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 we hear the complaints all the time. Because uh, people can sign up to come to the commission and give their complaint at the commission level as well. And we hear all of this stuff, um, like the PAB said, we're not getting reports, we're not getting you know, return phone calls. Uh, that's not, and I've raised my hand and tell them in the commission. That's not happening in Prince George County. I said, we, we have a great relationship down here. But I'm going to have, next time I'm going to say, yeah, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's a new word. Yeah, we have a lovely relationship in Prince George County. So I just want to share that with you guys. You guys are doing a great job. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll echo that because I attended um that, that big conference they had. um. With the PABs, um, I think Inspector General um, Inspector General Bennett was there, and um, Chief Collington, and a lot of chiefs from all over um, the state of Maryland. And pretty much from what we uh, learned from that meeting was um, pretty much Prince George's County um, was ahead, you know, uh, heads and shoulders above these other uh, counties um, as far as establishing PABs and the progress they made and pretty much the gold standard. So we're very happy to be a part of the county and what you guys are doing. So most definitely appreciate that. You know, it's always great to hear that. And uh, so you guys keep doing what you're doing. Um, you got a great team there. And um, I'm thankful to be a part of the team. Um, I'm glad you all said that because I think yeah. in some of my ride alongs, one of the reoccurring perceptions from officers is that police reform in general, and maybe they're looking at it from a national standpoint, they have sort of, I guess, taken on this notion that police reform is actually unfair to officers now, even though when we review a lot of cases, it really is. I, I, I explained to them, like, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing officers being unfairly sort of held into account. I mean, there's a discipline matrix and things like that. But it does seem like the perception is that um, officers are sort of under scrutiny to the point where they can't do their job. My my issue and where I think that's concerning is because I think it does become more pervasive where it's like, well, I'm not even going to bother to do my job the way I used to because I'm going to get caught up. I'm going to get fired. I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get locked up when that's really probably not happening, but that's the perception. Right. And it's I think it is probably having a real impact on policing. And so I just wonder you as chiefs have an ability to maybe influence some of that to let them know that might be the perception, but that might not be the reality. Yeah, so that when this whole police reform came about, it was like chill shot, right? You had people that like just, hey, I'm retiring, I'm, I'm not 
But as things start to settle down, you know, whenever there's change, there's always a lot of room. But as as things start to smooth out and people see, you know, I'm still going to do my job. One thing I will say that uh, is the saving grace for these officers, the in-car cameras and the body more cameras, right? So you can say what you want to say. Yes, I'm going to be looked at and I'm going to be investigated, but I know I'm going to be exonerated because I know that I, I didn't do anything wrong. Right. And so we go and be as chief, we go and sit down and we have to be, especially in municipalities, because we're small. Right. So I can go to roll calls. Right. I can stay over there to see the night shift and ride around with them and show up on call. You know, and, and I, you know, the leadership, if the officers feel that they have the confidence in the leadership, they're going to go out and do their job. Right. They know if they mess up, hey, we got to, we got to talk about, we got to deal with it. But they know if someone comes in, and they know that they know that they are right. We're going to look at that body camera. We're going to go through the, the motions. Like I said, as a chief, you know, not many chiefs will tell a, a citizen, come sit down, let's look at this together. Because I tell them I stand behind the officers. When they're right, I'm going to back them up. Right? I have no no qualms about that. I'm, I'm going to tell you the officer was right. Now, I want to hear your side of the story, and I want to see what your perception was. Maybe you didn't know that the officer could do what he did, right? So let me just talk to you a little bit of what the policy said. So we'll pull out the policy. Like I will sit and take time and, and talk to the citizens. I go to these community meetings when I hear, you know, some of the scuttlebutt that may come up and then we'll talk about it. And then when we get done, I, you don't always get 100% buy-in from everybody, but you don't get the majority to say, I, I support the police. You know, it's more people that, that support the police than uh, against the police. And I tell them also that all the time, do your job, right? So I, I'll say recruitment and retention, right? That's one of the, the, the dilemmas that we face now in policing because you have people that say, you know, I, I, we're not going to be part of the police. Like there's a young, I, I use the example, there's a young man I interviewed for a position as a uh, dispatcher. Right. And I said, so tell me what your goal is in the year. If you tell me that in the year you want to go to the police academy, that's OK. He said, no, nah, I'm good. I said, well, he said, no, I'm good. I just want to be a dispatch. And I said, I respect that. Right. But I, I just need to hear you say what it is that, you know, why you, you don't think you want to be a police. It's too dangerous. Uh, I don't want to put myself through that scrutiny uh, or that's just not my thing. I understand that we can work with it anyway, but uh, I think, again, uh, it's the leadership. I think as, as good chiefs and, and command staff, if we have these conversations with officers, we support them, show that we support them, show that, hey, I told them today, I said, I'm going up for a PAB meeting. They said, oh, okay, chief, bye. I said, you need you guys want to come along, I, I'll bring you up, right? So it shouldn't just, you guys shouldn't just hear from the chiefs. I, I, I'm confident putting the officer up here, you know, so they can answer some of these questions, right? So you, because you're going to, we chiefs, we fathers, right? We've been around. You know, it's 30 years for me. I know uh, Chief Brian, Chief Rice, you know, we've been around for a, a while. But when we bring these officers in and we say that you talk to them, and so how do you guys feel out here being, you know, with this PAB? They give you a candid answer. You know, because that's what we want. We want them to be on, right? Tell me how you feel, and then let's work from there. You know, so that that's my take on it. I think that uh, just bringing everybody to the table. You know, uh, we got it. We got to be transformation. Yeah, everybody's input matters. Yeah, um, I do have one quick question. So as a follow up, I know that you had said you uh, your officers have a duty to intervene. That training, how long is that duty to intervene? So that was a like four hour train okay. that they went through. Okay. Uh, but we implemented in the policy. So the policy says you have to do X, Y, Z. If someone gets, you have to make, you provide medical aid, you have to do the report. All of that's in that duty to intervene. Okay. Right. So they have to go and I'm, they sign up for the policy. So they can't say down the road, well, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Every policy that I've rewritten, uh, and issued out, they signed for. So that's the checks and balances within the organization. So. Thanks. Yes, 
Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Chief, and he was saying that the police officers uh, like for their cases to come before the ACC and the PAB because uh, they get those decisions reversed. Uh, you, when you say you get the decision, so the officers are saying that they prefer to go to take it to the board yes. because that the uh, not punishment, but if the board may be more lenient on them than the chief. Well, that's actually, actually yeah. 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 no, they go ask mom, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard that before as well. And I would say that when we send reports up, like. The internal affairs commander that I spoke of earlier, he's by the book. He, you know, he's, he's by the book, but he's also, uh, he understands, he uses empathy as well. Like he's a, he was a master trainer for over 20 years. So use of force and all of that kind of stuff. So he will come and say, Chief, I think mm, we should look at this. This is going to be some problem, right? And the officers know sometimes. But I would say that when he sent his report to the ACC, most of the time, they just tweak it a little bit, but for the most part, they say you spot them, you know. So none of our officers have said, "Hey, I'm going to a trial board because I don't because they know he's fit, right?" And once they come back from the ACC, they don't know. You. So you know they're not trying to cover up anything. If you're wrong, they're going to say termination, right? Uh, so when it comes back, it, it kind of lines up. They'll say, "Hey, you may have missed this." And then we'll put that in because I, I know there's some stuff that I've seen, and, and that was a true statement. I'm glad you brought that up because, no, that was you brought that up, really, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I have seen that our policy says it might be uh, 15 days suspension on make. The ACC is saying, no, I think it's two days, right? And the ACC, I mean, because they're the governing body that's looking over top of this, and the ACC says, you know, two days, then I'll say, okay, well, maybe we're looking at this a little bit too harshly, but I think that if we have standards, then I'm going to say, I believe this is my standard, right? So, but I've never had an officer yet say uh, they, they want to challenge the ACC. Not to say it won't happen down the road, but I'm just saying, as we speak today, they have accepted the recommendation from the ACC after the investigator has done their part and they come back down. So I think it's a it's it's a it's a uh, mechanism that's worked. I, I think that it really works. So now, as a chief, I think the chiefs would say. Now, some of them we might want to say again. If I say I'm thinking about terminating this guy, right? Because if that egregious. The ACC might say, oh, we look at that as a 15 day. So they kind of taken some of the authority from the chief of police within this, this police reform. Like we would say, hey, you're gone. But now the ACC is saying uh, 15 days. I have heard a story like that. Yeah. yeah. So so for the chiefs, we kind of see things a little differently. But you know, we we want to work with everybody. Yeah, let me add on to that real quick. Um Actually, um, I heard quite the same. Um, actually, I have an officer now that um, I recommended uh, termination for, and uh, he elected to go to trial board, and I'm hearing the same thing with a bunch of the county officers. Um, they want to go to trial board because they feel that they got a better chance um, at trial board because I guess a couple people um, um, went to trial board and and, and it, it, was, it overruled what the chief decision was um, uh, and so a lot of people, you know, you know, officers talk, you know, say, well, I'll take my chances here and there. But what we got to realize is that um, my officer that I have, he's a frequent flyer. I think he got one of the first cases when the PAB was established. So when the officer's wrong and don't have the mentality to do the right thing, um, they're going to make any excuse they can and try to find any out um, to get out of the situation they're in. So, um so they try to they try the trial board they try this they try that they try any way to try to uh, excuse themselves for the wrong that they've committed. So, um, but I did I did twenty eight years in D.C. sat on many trial boards. Never heard officers wanted to go to trial boards because in trial boards in D.C. 
the chances of getting fired were very high. So that means you guys are doing an outstanding job here because um, if the officers are looking at you and saying that uh, I got a chance here, that means that you guys are pretty much um, doing your job as far as um, as far as discipline and they seeing it being fairness, even though some of the chiefs might not see it as such. Um, so it's it's a good thing all the way around uh, having a chance for the officers, you know, have their due process and stuff. So um, I see it as a good thing, and I see it actually as a, a great thing for you guys because that means you're doing your jobs um, at a high level to get that kind of respect. When they when they ask them to come to you, that means they respect you. So that's my that's my take on it. Thank you, Brian. What what is your relationship with the PAB again, sir? Excellent. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> hey, man. I, hey, I love the PAB, man. I can call PAB. I can call PAB, send them an email. Angie sent me an email back in like two two minutes. I'm like, whoa. Tonight, she sent me one back in 10 seconds. So, um, I, and you know, and to piggyback off that, if you can say, Piggyback, uh, I know that you're saying that we are great, but we couldn't do this without our staff, right? So I do want to recognize them, but yeah. they are part of this process and, and they do the work that we don't, we can't do. So yeah, Miss Allen, I hear great things about her all throughout this this county. So um, yeah. kudos to our staff as well. So we all share in success. Yeah, I got a whole list of names, man. Your, your staff, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, Chief Collinson, you mentioned kind of being the gold standard with across the state as, as the county. And one of the things you said was, you know, because we're getting reports back. So when you send the, the gold standard, is it the agencies that are helping set that gold standard? Oh, because you said the PAB, but you also said getting the investigation reports back and things of that nature. So I'm just trying to understand what that measure for that standard is. So the agency's activeness and responsiveness to what's going on as opposed to the PAB administration. So what is the responsiveness of the agency between the agency and the PAB. They, other PABs are not having the cooperation from agency. Mm -hmm. and, and it was brought up to the, the training commission um, a couple of times. And, uh, and so we are trying to work out now where there has to be a mandate where you guys can get some information. So it should be coming out uh, short. Well, we're, we're trying to give you more teeth in it. Like, we're not trying to say, because I, I'll just be candid with you. A lot of uh, departments are, are saying, well, these guys aren't police officers, right? So they don't understand police work. So uh, why do we need to give them all that information? Now, you remember uh, LEOBR when it was out there, um, you guys couldn't even be nowhere near the investigation, right? So you couldn't even be nowhere near it. But now since they repealed the LEOBR and it stood up the PAB, the PAB is there to make sure that um, citizens' rights are protected, right? So you guys exist out there to, to make sure that the police officers, uh, the investigations are fair and that there's some accountability. So this, that makes the community say, okay, we have regular citizens watching our back over top of the police. So they got away from the oversight committee, but they said there's, there's a police accountability uh, board. So we're gonna put this board together. And I remember I remember when Angela Austin Brooks was doing the interviews, and I remember your interview uh, when she when she introduced everybody. You know, she went around and I was like, oh, okay, so this is, I caught the tail end of That's But I remember when it was on you. And uh, so I was sitting there watching, I said, okay, um, I'm I'm usually open-minded person, right? And I want to see things objective, right? So let's see where we go from here. And I'm willing to say police don't like change. Sometimes I say I must be a little different because I want to say that I am 100% a product of the community that I represent, right? I don't just put this uniform on and transform to something and say it's us and them, right? So that's not where I want to be. And I'll say that to the day I hang this uniform up. Um, I believe because I have family members that that I worry about when they go outside. So not all police are going to walk that line that they should walk. Sometimes people put this badge on and they become something that they should be, like they should have never had this uniform, right? So I'm, I'm a fair, fair believer of that. So when it comes down to uh, holding everyone accountable, I think my department will say, Chief is fair. 
So if I, I hear something, I'll say, pull that video. They already know. They, hey, Chief, can I talk to you for a second? I said, no, no, not right now. I'll get back to you in a minute. Right? Because they already know. Chief asked for the video. I ain't asking for the video to watch it like it's a Netflix. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they know I'm looking into something because I would say you treat people the way you want your family treated. Right? So just because you don't live in this town don't mean you get to mistreat people in this town. Right? So that's not going to happen. And I'm sure these chiefs up here, they're the same city. So. Can I go now, Mr. President? No, sir. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No. So um, think, did, did anybody have one other follow-up question? I know that we... Um, I had one earlier, but I don't, don't remember about that. Uh, well, with that being said, Chief Ryan, thank you so very much, sir. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, and then if you can do one thing, just get Chief Rice a new cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll work with the guy. I'll work with him. <laughs> so those are resources. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you, we know what he needs to do his job back. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you again to, to all of you to participate, Chief Rice, uh, Chief Collins, and Chief Rice. We know that he has some issues. So for those of you that are following us on and, and and real quick, before you guys go, can you just give a little bit about your history so that for the people that watch this during play last they'll know? Um, like the history, I know I've, I've talked to you a little bit about uh, some of the things that you've done. Um, so, well, okay, it's going to be another Peter team. So, I'll give you the Peter Saturday. So, uh, I spent uh, 21 years uh, with the city of Tacoma Park uh, Police Department. I rose through the ranks of uh, all the way up to captain, assistant chief, acting chief. Uh, I was uh, internal affairs commander. Uh, I spent 12 and a half years as a detective. Uh, I worked some plain clothes stuff. I spent 22 and a half years as a military uh, veteran. Um, I'm retired. Uh, so I uh, served on Iraqi Freedom, served during Dead Storm. So you guys probably remember this. Um, Rain Star 85. Anybody remember that? We had the conflict with Libya. Um, uh, so I served, uh, served I went in the military in 1984. So that's how long ago. Uh, so that's why I've been in the town of Bladesburg for six years. Uh, so I went to Bladesburg High School. I was looking for a retirement job. I saw Bladesburg was retiring. Let me put in for kicks and giggles. I tell people, jokingly, the joke is on me. Uh, <laughs> um, I think this is a, I work for uh, the great town of Bladesburg. And now I'm just so uh, proud of the people that I serve. Thank you, sir. Chief, Chief Brian, you go ahead. I don't know if I can follow that act. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Chief Bryant, um, um, I did, uh, I started with Metropolitan Police Department, um, been in law enforcement for over 34 years, uh, started with MPD in 1990, um, retired in 2019. Um, my last assignment was a uh, district commander, 7th district on Alabama Avenue, the worst district in the city. So uh, I, I had a lot of experiences dealing with officers, dealing with trial boards, um, a great career with MPD. Um, had a lot of great assignments. I was SWAT commander at one time, uh, detective lieutenant, um, assistant, um, assistant to uh, the chief that was in charge of all the officers of all seven patrol units would contain 2,900 officers. Um, got a lot of outstanding awards. Um, just committed to um, law enforcement. After sitting around the house for three years, um, my wife told me to get out of the house. So I saw an opening for Glenarden Police Department, um, which wasn't like eight minutes away from my house because I am a member of First Baptist Church of Glenarden for the last 25 years. So um, that was pretty much um, my community, my neighborhood and stuff. So I felt right at home after joining the department for the past two and a half years. Um, we were able to make great strides and try to get the police department um up to par to serve the community of Glen Arden. So love my job, love the community, and uh I love the PAB. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much to both. Yes, sir. Uh, with that being said, does anybody else have anything from the staff that they want to uh, bring up at this time? No? Okay. Well with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and call this meeting. Well I can't do that. I apologize. So I'll take I will entertain a motion. So. I move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn made by Mr. Jones. I didn't even hear that. Motion to adjourn made by Mr. Jones, seconded by uh, Mrs. Um, Springs. 
All in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed that we have. Hey, Chief Collington. Yeah. Chief Collington, let them people go home now. <laughs> we knew something we didn't. That's why he didn't show up. 8 18 p.m. opposed. Thank you. All right. I want to get